We are going to talk about vaccines and what's on the way that might avoid what we've had, surges and lockdowns and masks and all the rest of it. Yeah, I, did st- I stepped out slightly for a couple of weeks, but I came back in with a vengeance. So much stuff on vaccines. It's unbelievable. All the work that's going on. I mean, I was struck by the effort is unrelenting in many ways, you know. And the big issue now is can we get one to stop you getting infected? That's a big challenge. Now, we know the current vaccines stop severe disease, but you can still get reinfected. Wouldn't it be wonderful if a vaccine could stop infection as well? Uh, there's 12 of those in development four in phase three amazingly so some of those might make it and the second one is that we love is a, what's called a pan-coronavirus vaccine that'll work against a- any coronavirus really any variant yeah. again there's loads of those in development so I was really struck by I knew, I knew there's lots of effort happening but it's, not, it's remarkable how much effort is going into this at the moment now, now what is the science behind trying to stop you getting infected I mean in theory you could put two filter wedges up your nose you could <laughs> you know? yeah that would but work that would not be yeah. comfortable or a strong mask maybe <laughs> that yeah. might work as well. so um, yeah the, tr- the, tr- the challenge has been the vaccines aren't protecting the nose so the virus can get into your nose and grow there but, and then you get the symptoms and you, you test positive on PCR because you take a swab and now you're positive and you will get some symptoms as we know reinfection is causing symptoms and a risk of long COVID so it is quite still serious the, the reinfection problem but of course they're stopped when you're getting really severe disease the vaccines do that and the challenge has been can we stop the nose getting infected basically and they've tried this for years Pat by the way with flu there was one vaccine it's up the nose uh, it's called yeah, flu mist children got that didn't yeah, they that's right and that works a bit that's quite successful you know so again they're basing it on that kind of you know but again what's happened that's very exciting is new immunology has come along to boost the response in the nose and some of the experimental ones now are showing great response in animals initially of course getting great antibodies in your nose if you can make antibodies in your nose you see they'll mop up the virus as soon as it's there and, and stop it spreading yeah, but what know? about if you breathe through your mouth and you suck the virus into your lungs yeah yeah, well, that's the other thing. That's the trouble. It's, it's called mucosal immunity. All your upper airways, you want to protect the upper airways and the nose need to be protected, yeah. basically. And an antibody called IgA is needed in those parts of your body. And again, these new vaccines are driving IgA. A second thing I must mention is there's a part of the immune system called sting. There's a new word for you. That, right? So sting is a really powerful way to turn on the immune response. They've got ways to drive sting in the experimental vaccines. And that combination of a sting driver in, and, and intranasal is giving great responses. At the moment, though, just in these, in these more experimental Studies. Would I therefore need two vaccines? One, the kind of the standard Pfizer or Moderna, whatever, which protects my lungs, my uh, f- down my airwaves from being infected. Yeah. And then this nasal thing. So I'd need two. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And that's what they're getting approved. The trials at the moment are you take the box standard into your muscle into your arm. Right. And then you do the nasal maybe three weeks later, that kind of time frame. And that's what's showing great promise in the animal studies initially. You see, and that seems to work especially well. So the, the body vaccine, if you like, gets the whole thing going. Right. Yeah. Then you try the intranasal and now your nose is protected as well. And that, that's what the uh, the allure, I call this, of the nasal vaccine then is becoming more and more evident. Now, you might explain to us, Luke, why some vaccines are terrific, like the measles vaccine. You know, that, that works. Um, yeah. We all get it and we don't get measles yeah. and it doesn't matter really when you got it that's right yes well you see the trouble is you know, this is a new virus remember it's different to the measles virus the, another surprise to us all was how quick it's changing it's been frighteningly fast at forming variants as we know and we didn't expect that necessarily you know but now we see BA5 as the latest one measles hardly ever changes okay. so one vaccine bang it'll work you know against any measles really t- tiny tiny changes the other end of the spectrum is HIV by the way which changes all the time and that's why we couldn't get a vaccine for HIV as one reason because it changes constantly yeah. in your body even in one person you have loads of variants of HIV and the coronavirus are in the middle we think they are changing not as much as HIV but they're not as stable as measles either you see so that's the challenge with these ones Now what about monkey pox which we know is causing concern in California and New York and other parts of the United States someone has died already from uh, monkey pox uh, so does that change? Um, no that's stable as well Th- that's in the smallpox virus family at the moment it looks like that's pretty stable so again and the smallpox vaccine of us by the way we're works against monkeypox and there's a big campaign as you've seen to start monkeypox vaccination as well. So that means that those of us and I had one as a child I'm sure a smallpox vaccination I should still have yeah. protection against monkeypox. There pox. should be still some re- residual on me as well and anybody yeah. kind of over 50 would have had the smallpox vaccine years and years ago you see and there should be some res- hopefully some residual protection. but even still they're recommending vaccination for anybody who's at risk of monkeypox and certain people are at more risk than others you see so again it wouldn't surprise me but they'll begin a monkeypox vaccination campaign more widely.
right. Now, we know that uh, flu does change from year to year and there uh, are sometimes multiple variants of flu uh, knocking around. What is it about flu that makes it, and, and where does it lie in that uh, spectrum of very fast changing HIV yeah. versus not changing at all measles? Yeah, it's a bit like the coronavirus, the same kind of range of change is happening, but the trouble is it's quite seasonal, so you get a new flu strain every winter, and of course we see it in Australia and New Zealand, then we base our vaccines on, on what's happened there. The trouble with, with coronavirus is it's changing more rapidly, it's not, it doesn't seem to be as, as predictable as that you see, and hence there's a big push for the pan-coronavirus. We can't keep inventing new vaccines all the time and getting boosters, you see. That would be unfeasible. So the dream would be to make a pan-coronavirus, one that will work against any... But the trouble is, Pat, we didn't get one for flu anyway. There was big efforts to make a pan-flu yeah. vaccine. That hasn't worked, you see. So these things aren't straightforward. It's, it takes an awful lot of effort and science, basically, to dig into this. And, and the hope is that coronaviruses will crack it and they might crack it for flu as well as one of you. Yeah.